Well, hello. Um, this is Skix doing a live video. Uh, Facebook has a fancy new interface. It's sort of like they realized I was looking at Twitch and decided, hey, you could do all that uh, on Facebook. Um, I believe if I click this button, it's going to share my screen. Look at that. Now you can see my screen. You can see what's going on in my life. That's wild. Um, and then in theory, I could now play a video clip. I wonder if the audio is, go is coming across. That's Johnny Brandon. He's awesome. Stop sharing, and now it should be back to my face. It's not back to my face. What's going on? Where's my face? Oh, unclick share screen. There it is. When I click stop sharing screen, you would think it would stop sharing screen. Uh, I've got about 15 minutes before my chicken nuggets are done. I wanted to uh, check out uh, some of this, some of these options. It, it is funny because Desktop Live now has features that I just today discovered are, are how Twitch works. Um, so that's funny. Um, I can't tell if anyone's tuning in now because the format is different and it's blinking for some reason. I don't know why. Why are you blinking? Um, I have a new uh, webcam coming in the mail in the next couple weeks. Uh, I haven't much to say. Parts of today have been rough. I've had to use my therapy skills. Um, DBT or dialectic behavior therapy for anyone out there who has al already has also been through uh, this or who has any interest in it. Um, it's been a, that flickering. I don't know if you're seeing the flickering, but I'm seeing the flickering. It is um, a set of skills that include skills for emotion regulation, skills for distress tolerance, skills for mindfulness, and skills for personal effectiveness. Um, today I use skills for uh, emotion regulation and distress tolerance. I was having my day and then things happened that caused attention and it was like uh, a switch was flipped in my brain and suddenly I was riled uh, and everything was riling me further. Um, and so the skills I use were first stop, step away from everything, stop uh, responding, stop talking, um, get separated from everyone um, when, when I could. Stomp is an important skill. It actually, in DBT, it stands for S-T-O-P, something, 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 something. Everything stands for something. Uh, Marsha Lanahan, who invented the technique, loved her some acronyms or initialisms, uh, mostly acronyms. Uh, so Stomp. Then uh, what else? What did I do next? Uh, I did what's called a chain analysis, where I looked at uh, the outcome was me being riled up, what were some vulnerabilities? What were some things um, that were true leading into the moment when that switch happened that might have made it more likely for that switch to happen? Right. So um, historically, one of the more important, boy, this camera is going to piss me off. One of the more important uh, vulnerabilities is sleep. Um, if I've had less sleep, I'm way more uh, emotionally volatile. Uh, but in this case, I didn't have a lot of uh, sleep problems. But as you may imagine, the background tension of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic is absolutely a vulnerability. 
everyone else in my environment also going through the same thing is vulnerability. Um, being unsure about stuff is a vulnerability. Um, possibly I was a little hungry. We'll add it to the list. So um, being aware of these vulnerabilities is useful uh, because you can now uh, look at whether you can address any of the vulnerabilities, right? Perhaps have a snack or perhaps, um, you know, uh, distracting myself from uh, the stress um, or something like that. And that can, one, perhaps uh, talk me down from this uh, state, but two, in future, these are things I can keep an eye on. So I, I assessed vulnerabilities. Uh, what else? Um, I observed what is it I am feeling and what is it I am thinking? Not judging, not should, not ought to, not good, bad, but just observe. What, is, what am I feeling? I'm feeling agitated. What does that feel like? I'm feeling uh, like my heart is racing. I feel like I'm breathing fast and short. Um, I'm feeling like my, my, my eyebrows are contracted and I can't uncontract them. Um, I'm feeling um, discouraged and frustrated and irritated and, um, you know, make that list observe, right? Uh, that is a, a very important skill and observing without judging, just the simple observation of measurable facts wherever possible. Um, that helps me become aware of what's going on, but it also, to a certain extent, distances me from, and this is, this is all part of emotional regulation and distress tolerance. Um, so after that, observe, uh, then um, going into some uh, distress tolerance skills, um, I'm allowed to feel as I feel, right? I need to get rid of the idea that I'm, I shouldn't feel as I feel or that the things that happen shouldn't have happened. Um, this is called radical acceptance. You gotta accept it, it is what it is. Fighting truth uses up all my energy and then I can't use any of my energy for problem solving. Then I did some uh, mindful breathing with the help of an app I have on my phone called the Virtual Hope Box, which was invented for veterans, but um, anyone can use it. Um, and that slowed my breathing and my heart rate and I immediately started to feel better. But I kind of had to do the other stuff before I could get to the point where I could do the mindful breathing. Um, because if I'm too agitated to focus, if I'm too agitated to, to realize what's going on, if I'm too agitated to problem solve and look at what, what are some of the skills I have, what are some of the things I have access to that can help. And it took me 15, 20 minutes to get there. If I had got to the problem solving quicker, um, it could have taken less time. But as is, I had to go through the, the sort of analyzing stage before I could get to the problem solving stage. Um, with practice, this process can get shorter. Um, if I'm kind of on top of my game, if I don't have a lot of these vulnerabilities going on, I can do this in the middle of a conversation without having to step away from it. Um, but uh, as I say, there's a lot going on. I'm not at my best. No one is right now. Uh, but the, these are some of the skills I gained through therapy. Um, if this sounds like it would be useful to you, I'd be happy to talk about it more. Um, I have the workbooks I got from therapy. I, I'd be happy to go over some of these techniques. Um, you don't have to uh, need therapy to be able to benefit from from these skills and I sincerely feel that some of these skills it would be useful if they were taught in school like I don't know how many times I in my life I've gotten into a mood and I and I know that the mood doesn't make sense I know that the mood is working against me I know that the things I want in life are being impeded by this mood, but how do you change a mood? A mood just is, I'm gonna let it rule me, sometimes for days at a time. Now, I, I do have a mood disorder, um, but there's a difference between the, the biochemical 
uh, bipolar switch and, and just a mood because you're particularly volatile at the, at the moment and something happens and suddenly your, your up becomes down. Suddenly your, your, your good day becomes a miserable day. Some, you know, something happens and your, your optimism tanks out and suddenly you're defeating yourself. Um, so even some of the most basic of these skills would have been useful from childhood, right? What would happen if a child who throws tantrums learned to self-regulate, learned to recognize when a tantrum is coming, learned to recognize that it works against them, uh, and learned some skills that uh, would help them not have this meltdown? Um, even if it's like um, one for one for me sometimes is I have to look at my uh, sensory input in the moment, right? Um, and this is an autism spectrum uh, thing, uh, an ADHD thing. This is a, a thing out there. If there's uh, too much unfiltered sensory input, right? Uh, someone with, with ADHD, for example, sometimes can't tune out background noise or smells or a scratchy tag on the back of their shirt. Um, so, uh, if there's a lot of this going on, it can be really overwhelming. And then, um, a, a way to deal with that is first notice it's happening and then, uh, subtract as much of that sensory overload as you can. Um, for me today, I also went to a dim room to sit and, and to work on this. Um, because I was in a sensory, sensorily stimulating environment. Um, and I find going to a dim room where it's either quiet or the sound itself is relaxing sound, it helps me focus enough so I can start using the other skills. Um, I sure hope the camera is not flickering for you like it is for me. Uh, it's really annoying and it's starting to trigger some of that sensory overload uh, that I spoke of. So. As near as I can tell, nobody has been watching for the entire 12 minutes. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, or if it's just something about this interface, um, or if it's not sharing with you guys. I don't know. Um, I'm going to have to see how it came out. Stupid focus.